Tonight, I'm going to be doing a Louisville and Nashville logo, and I'm going to be doing it for a good friend of mine, Ian e. Bell, who friends of mine, Stacy Mansfield and Casey Thomason, are visiting him in Kentucky, and Ian e. Bell is a good friend. I, met him several times when I was in Virginia at the VMT and he's a big fan of Louisville Nashville and getting a little bit ahead of myself one of the biggest things is the Louisville Nashville at least in the logo here has a slanted L the L and N are on a slant and it's kind of important probably even don't be afraid to erase probably even more than I did just here make sure that they're the slant if you don't do it quite enough you really need to do the slant so that your eye catches the slant And what I tend to do when I do the L and N logo is I do the L and the N first. And then I put the N symbol in between because the L and the N are the same size. And Basically, I have to admit I haven't given quite as much advice here. I probably should give a little bit more advice. Mainly the slant is very important. And the thing about it is, is that the, the vertical bars are narrow on the N and the vertical bar on the L is wide if you start looking at the L and the N and then the diagonal bar on the N is wide and the horizontal bar on the L is narrow. L and N logo is a good example of a logo to kind of look at as far as sort of seeing how the font works. And I remember actually one of my favorite Christmases when I was first starting to draw trains, I actually got the book Louisville, Nashville and the Appalachians by Ron Flannery. And right after I opened my presents, I just went upstairs and started drawing trains. And that was actually very exciting. And that was, before there was an internet and just I went upstairs and one of my favorite Christmases I started drawing Louisville Nashville trains so I've actually always enjoyed the Louisville Nashville a lot and I should probably make the tail on this a little bit and basically living in California and I was just something I saw a couple of Louisville Nashville cars going through Davis and just kind of made me think of the Appalachians and the boxcars were blue some of them were more of a boxcar red kind of color and just sort of made my imagination think of far away they had come and it was kind of neat in reading Ron Flannery's book seeing the trains carrying their coal and I definitely can appreciate the Louisville Nashville and I see why 
Ian Bell, such a big fan of the Louisville Nashville. Try not to block it too much with my hand. Now, I might have made it a tiny bit narrower than it needs to be, but especially when you're doing your train drawings, often logos don't totally, as long as they're the concept of the shape is there. Try to just, you know, get them as true as you can. And then, so here, I'll try to make this line a little bit more. I always kind of liked cities of Louisville and Nashville and Cincinnati. I used to watch WKRP in Cincinnati and thinking of the coal going to Cincinnati and Louisville. It was always kind of seeing the river barges on TV. Well, it's probably ready to start coloring it. Okay, let's put yellow. I should always put yellow before red. And red is a color that if the yellow goes over the edges, yellow doesn't really show up in red. It shows up more in colors like blue. But in red and black, yellow is perfectly okay to overspray. Do the separator stripe here. Okay. And put another coat, at least in a few places. And mainly just kind of don't want to pick up too much pencil in yellow. That's one of the biggest things. Once it starts picking up pencil. It gets a little bit, sort of, gets a little bit of the dirtiness to it, which on sometimes, especially trains of all things, is fine. But when you're trying to get a shiny engine, and as I said before, here I get this test pad over here. St start and restart your pins is always good, because. And sometimes, especially ball points or whatever, they can smear, so be careful a little bit when you're doing this. Go around the outside where the red will go. And then L and N, at least the nice thing is it has a lot of straight edges. So But again, when you're picking it up, you want to emphasize the angles on it and the slope of the L and the slope of the N. And it's fine to do the N sign next, but the L and the N are the exact same height. So while you're doing the L, you might as well do the N. Now, the one thing, this and sign is a lot narrower than the other letters. When you go around it with a ballpoint pen, be careful not to cut off any of it. And 
Still haven't gone around the inside of this I so quickly. And what happens here sometimes is sometimes when it can get away from you, the ballpoint pen, and it can quickly go like that into the yellow. So right when it gets to the end, kind of be a little bit careful there. Okay, so it's trimmed now, and then we basically take the red. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically, as you've seen me do before, you kind of go around the bottom of the letters. Around this hand sign. And while we're at it, we could go around the outside too. I might save the outside though. The outside kind of takes a little bit more patience. It's okay if you do one of them and you pick it up later. Sometimes, part of why it's good to flip this too is that it gives you a moment's kind of pause to breathe and reflect. Because what happens is, is when you're trimming all this, a lot of kind of anxiety almost builds up about getting close to the letters and not getting any of the red into the yellow. And every time you kind of spin it or take a moment's pause, you kind of just take a little break. Spin it again. And there we have it, the Louisville Nashville logo for E.M. Bell. And we're all your great rail fan buddies, E.M.